It's been great working with Paul and his organization in, in the 4-2 and the 4-3 with the upgrades and stuff. I know bo both our organizations have been working heavily with testing 4-3. I've been in 4-3 so much. Coming back to 4-2 today is like, oh, what do I have to remember that's different? But uh, what I've been doing in terms of working with it and developing is I took a number of my presentations, the best practice guides that I've developed, and they're now 4-3 compatible. So I'm giving you a 4-2 version that a biggest percentage of users are still gonna be running in a long while yet till their company organization gets to, you know, down the road a little bit where they can look realistically at 4.3. We don't wanna forget about them, but at the same time we wanna have 4.3. So if we have some select users out there that are 4.3, I have a 4.3 version of this presentation in addition to the 4.2. So this is a really fun topic to do. Um, it takes advantage of an amazing feature inside of Webby that so many people overlook. Uh, we're all used to doing breaks in a report. I'm going to start out and show you that. I actually did a presentation a while back, and it might be on Let's Speak BO. I believe I'm not even sure. Uh, breaks versus master detail. Well, we're going to concentrate specifically on master detail in two pieces, part one and two. Get the basic laid out and show you some of the fundamental things and so on. And then in the part two, we'll go back in and we'll add in things like uh, stoplights and and uh, conditional formatting and hiding master or detail blocks and stuff. It just gives you a totally different way of laying your data into, into multiple sections. So instead of taking a report with breaks, we break it out and physically create multiple sections out of it. You can almost like taking a pair of scissors for that. So here's your standard uh, entry screen for, for the application side to get into Webby. Let me get out there and I'm just gonna pull in some basic stuff out of here. Gotta remember I'm in 4.2, not 4.3. So I gotta catch myself here. And let's just very quickly, let's grab some information we're gonna need, year and quarter. And we'll take our state and two of the four measures. Sometimes it's easier to take all of them by grabbing the whole folder and then dragging them out. Okay, so we got year, year quarter state sales revenue quantity sold, we run it, nothing magical there. And now I've got my data in as vertical table, but it's a single block. Okay, there it is. So we learned how to fancy things up as a new user. One of the light features is applying a break to organize it. I wanna organize it based on state. I can go in and off the famous analysis toolbar up here, right up here, here they all are. When you move to 4.3, you'll see some subtle differences where things are and so on, but, but the, func the functions are there just a matter of locating them. We're in 4.2, we'll stay here right now. Let's pop a break in there. And now it breaks it out for each state. And if I wanted, I could add a second one on year and so on. But the point is I'm still self-contained within that same single block. I'd like to make the data more hierarchical. We look at things in a hierarchical way. I'd like to make it work a little differently than that. So what I wanna do instead is come up with an alternative way and look at what we can do with it. So let's say that I wanted to break this out by state, but rather than do a break and keep it all within a self-contained block, then I can work independently on each state because they're in separate sections, as you'll see. I can do some amazing things with it. So let's take state up here. And uh, what we're gonna do is, I, I notice I'm moving it down. I wanna, pull, I wanna pull the state column out and I wanna drop it up to above or on the left edge here, where I want my master cell for each state value to appear and the remaining columns or objects will then appear as a single block underneath that. There's one way to do that. The classic shortcut way is you come in here and you do a set a section. I don't like that feature because when you do that, you let Webby pick what it wants to do, when, where it wants to drop the state over here. And I don't want it up here and I don't want it down here. I want it where I want it. So I don't use that particular feature. If you're doing it something new, you can go to report elements. You can click on the section button here. If you click on the insert section, you get the little floating cursor and you could drop your cell right there as well. I like controlling it. So I have less work later on realigning things. I'm gonna grab my state. This is one of those, air, one of those features where you have to be careful where you grab it from. You know, normally when I'm teaching, I and even presentations, I talk about if I'm dragging a column out of the report or in, all right, that block, I got to be careful to stay out of the title or I get that second prompt. Are you eliminating the row? Are you eliminating the column? Okay, I want the whole thing out of there. So when you do a master detail, it's even worse. If you drag it out here, it kind of pulls it all out, but it doesn't give you the master detail. So I always stay out of the titles. One of my famous quotes that I always use in training is stay out of the titles, except if you're formatting. Other than that, you have no business being in there. Leave them alone. Don't mess with them. So we'll grab the state column. We'll pull it up here. We'll pull it all over and drop it into place right about there. And lo and behold, all of a sudden, I've got a report laid out in a totally new way. This is pretty cool. So now there's my detail report. It's still a vertical table minus one column. 
State now became a master cell. The report became the detail. It's a master section and a detailed section because we've broken it out. So it's like taking what we normally did done with breaks and a pair of scissors and cutting it up. But what I love about this feature, notice it did it for every state. Now I only have eight states in this one, the fashion one, but imagine if I had all 50 states, I'd be looking at 50 master detail blocks. What if I'm a banking, into, banking uh, type company and I have branches, 400 branches, and I wanna pull each branch out like that and make it a master cell, then I can get all the branch detail. It opens up the, your, the doors to all kinds of interesting ways in doing things as well. So why don't we take that state, and in order to help us, we're gonna go into format it real quick. I'm gonna put a border on it so it's a little easier to, to see it. Basic routine stuff for that. And now I've got it bordered, and now it makes it a little easier to see where every master section starts, okay? And lo and behold, here we go. Makes it very, very nice. Uh, what I wanna do is what if I wanted it to be a two level, have, have it broken out two ways in, in the master section with the detail section being the block itself. Well, maybe in this case, I wanna pull year out and pull year up and put year right underneath it. I wanna be careful not to replace it, but to drop it right underneath it. And lo and behold, now it's got year out here for each state. And now what I have, instead of eight states, I've got each, each state with four years, a, a secondary uh, set master section under it. So there's 32 total in here, eight times four, 32. But look how nice this is. She said, well, this is an awesome way to look at my data, okay, hierarchically. One of, the, one of the big reasons people like to do this is for search. If this, let's assume that I did have all 50 states, each with four years, that's 200 master detail blocks. And a user comes along as they will and says, can you find me New York? Can you find me Oregon? So you're playing with the scroll bar on the right and the page numbers on the bottom, trying to figure out where it is or use wildcard searching, searching whatever, it doesn't matter. You, you get caught up in that, it gets to be a little bit too much. But lo and behold, I got to remember left side because everything's on the left side in 4.2 in and a lot of it's on the right side on 4.3. So little things you'll learn later. So what I wanted is I'm going to go over here to an option called navigation map. And if you're unsure of these, you should be using the self-help feature. That's what it's for. It's so cool to have that for everything. Even local variables now have the ability to put a description in there that shows up as a self-help. So we're going to click on the tab up here, this one right here. And this is called the map tab. Okay, It's a navigation map. And I want you to notice what it created here, which is so cool. Let me open these up. I'm not gonna open them all up, but partway. What it did was it literally created a hierarchical search tree. And this is invaluable. Like if you were a branch and you had it broken out by 400 branches, just imagine you're trying to find somewhere in the M's, trying to find it, you get an automatic map for the, every one of your master cells. So by doing state and year, it's a two level. So what it allows me to do is say, well, let's go to Florida for 2018, I'm there. Let's go to Illinois, I'm there. Let's go to New York down here, I'm there. Or back up to the top and lo and behold, there you go. Because I made it a two level, it worked out very, very well. I was able to do that uh, quite effectively for that. Uh, and it gives me that awesome map. If you were to export this out and put it into PDF format, good old Adobe, okay? A nice little bonus you get when it converts it over. First of all, obviously they can't change it. But secondly, it brings the map, this navigation map across as a bookmark. Wow, is that cool? So all of a sudden we've got functionality. I only wish input controls would do that as well. It would make sense, but then unfortunately they don't for us there as well. So, so here we go. We've got a you know, master detail layout. Notice the quarterly detail level information, typical things you'd wanna do, even though it's it's a master detail with two master cells and a detail. Maybe we want totals on sales revenue. So we'll go up here to the analysis and we'll do the uh, functions and we'll do the sum, okay? And you'll click on quantity sold and we'll do the sum. Some of you out there that have been running in, up in the SP67 world 4.2 probably wondered why I didn't get automatic subtotals there because there's no break here. That's one of the new features you get in, in the 4.2 in the and the, the SP6 and 7 world you wanna try to get those are the kind of things you want to have because it take advantage of those as well. So here we go. So as you look at it, say, well, this is wonderful, but wouldn't it be nice if I could have the totals down here at the at the master level up here for the master cell for year? So I could see the totals before I get into it and at the end as well. And better yet, what about if I wanted to have them rolled up at the state level? So imagine building this one piece in Excel and how much time and effort would it take you, okay? How much time and effort you'd have to spend on it in Excel. Everything we do, if you notice, when I change in one section, ripples through all of it because it's just repeating block with different set of data. 
So what I could do is take advantage. Let's go over to our, our uh, available objects here. So I need, I want to start by dropping in totals for, for, the, uh, for the 2018 year. So we'll drag our sales revenue into the right here. We'll drop it into place. We know it's going to overflow. It always does. And lo and behold, there's my sales revenue total. Got to do a little sizing. Once you size it and get it all set up, you probably want to use the paint feature and copy it across all of them. I grab quantity sold again, drag that into the right side, being very careful to put it as close as I can, but not to overlap it as well. Get a nice little total out of it and I can move it around. And there's some really neat features, little tips and tricks. Let me just highlight one very briefly. For these three cells going across, they're my master cells. These are actually called section totals because they're at the master section. I can right click my mouse on any one of those and you'll notice there's an align feature. Don't get caught in a trap of centering them on top of each other because that's what it does. Let's say, let's align them in the middle of that row so they kind of line up going across. But what's nice about it, all I had to do is drag it in and I'm going to get section totals. I drag it into one, it ripples through all of them. Okay, That is cool. In Excel, think of the amount of work. I'm kind of lining my report up right underneath it so that the totals kind of line up. So I need it for state as well. So we're going to grab sales revenue a second time. We'll drop it into place right here. We'll do a little moving and shift and whatever to get it to line up, but we'll drop it into place. And again, once you do it once, copying the format over to the others becomes automatic. I'll move it over a little bit more so it kind of lines it up over the top there. I thought I got it moved. Move it a little bit more. And then we'll take the quantity sold, drop that into place over to the right of that one, one right there. This one, I still got to get it to move over a little. It's just not moving quite as much as I would like it to. Oh, I did, we'll take the uh, quantity sold for it. One of the questions I get often asked about that is, why didn't you just take it from the report column right there, drag it up there from there? Well, as you know, throughout all the Webby, if you drag something out of a block, it's out of the block, the column disappears. I didn't wanna do that because I didn't wanna lose the detail report. I wanted to have the summary one up here. I wanted my section totals at each level. I only did two levels, could be more than that. And lo and behold, there's my detail report right underneath it with sales revenue quantity sold and the subtotals that I put in. So progressing very nicely on that one. So it's falling into place. We now have that navigation map that will be an invaluable tool for us as well. Some of the things I'm gonna do in the second section later on is we'll apply conditional formatting in here. We're gonna use conditional formatting to insert a, a stoplight, a red, yellow, green stoplight. Maybe we do a thumbs up and down, do some other formatting techniques as well. But the big thing was getting it lined up. Now, even though these are master cells, do not forget about the analysis toolbar. It's still our best friend. For example, maybe I want that sorted in descending order. Okay, so it goes Texas to California. If I might do that, if I intend to look at the low end of the alphabet more than the high end, it may make sense. In our case, it did not make sense to do that. We'll go back to ascending order. Well, there we go. What about, what about the years? Okay. We have the years option where we could do this. Let me go back up to page one. I'm not at the top of this report because it had multiple pages. So maybe at the year level, on the other hand, it would make sense. So we'll go in and we'll do a sort on that one in descending order. So most people, when they start building master details, the first thing they say is, well, most of the analysis toolbar is gonna wash out. Where does the break make sense? These really aren't breaks, but they're kind of a, a type of break, aren't they? The difference is instead of being a break within the column, it's pulled into a master section where you have the master on top with the detail underneath. This might be patient information or customer information with detailed orders or patient detail information underneath it as well. It doesn't have to be two levels, could be one, which we're gonna do a, in a later session as well. But nevertheless, those are the options for there as well. Uh, you can't really do a break, you could do a ranking. I could rank based on the uh, quantity sold here. I could do a ranking on that, use the ranking function. If I wanted to, that would work as well. Uh, filtering would work just like any other one. If you highlight on state, use the filter. It's no different than a vertical table, horizontal table, form, or even a chart. You can do your standard typical things. Just the master record, master detail concept just gives you more. Upper right-hand corner, you can go from design mode to structure. When you're dealing with this kind of a structure, it often helps to do that. Let me go to structure only. You may want to do all your dragging around this way. I would rather for master details do it with the data. You might be more comfortable doing it this way. You can do that. You can go back in, say, well, now that we've done that, we'll put the data back in there for it and we'll do our manipulating around and so on. If you want to move these, you have to be a little bit careful too when you try to move the uh, 
The master cells kind of be very careful. You can extend them up or down a little bit. That's where these come in handy to make it a little bit bigger. I, I try to get it so I've got it laid out uh, when I create the master detail block. When, what are my mass, primary master cells going to be? What are my details? Obviously, they're going to be dimension based and other functions available as well. And lo and behold, now we're able to look at our data in a whole new way with, with all this. I actually had a customer one time, a Fifth Third Bank down in Cincinnati, Ohio. And a gentleman had been in my training class, and he, we went through this with some additional things that we'll get to in part two. And he came back to me about a week later when he came back for advance, and he said, you know, in the last two days of training that I had, I learned one single thing in there that stood out. And he said, and it was the biggest hit in our area. So I don't know who's going to get back. And one of the managers from my area comes back. I want you to create a report with the, with the, with the bank name up in the header section with the detail underneath it. I want you to do a separate blocks for every bank. So he's envisioning, how am I going to do this in Excel? He didn't. He, he did it in Webby. He exported it to Excel and off he went to the races and let Webby do all the work. He got all the credit, saved him. He had three or 400 branches. He said, I would have to create in Excel four. 400 separate individual blocks with each one of these in here. All these subtotals would have been had to have been generated, secondary to down here and so on. Uh, all would have made it very, very interesting for that. Uh, so, so we wanna be careful for that part as well. Uh, one, input controls could also be generated. In fact, I actually think input controls for this would be a good thing to do, maybe for state and or years, something like that, to, to drive it a little bit more. But the other thing that's pretty cool, I'm gonna actually finish this one out with that here, right here. So let's say that I take this block here and I copy it, I do a copy. And I go over to the right side and I do a right click and I do a paste. I get, where's my paste in there? There we go. And I created a duplicate report. I know send the guys out in the white coats, but uh, I'm not totally crazy. But what I wanted to do is I didn't wanna have a repeating block. And remember what you do in the details section goes through all the details section. What you do in the master section goes through all the master sections, all right? But I don't want that. I want to do this. I want to convert this into my infamous turn into. Let's turn that thing into a pie chart. And there it is. And we'll grab the corner, real easy to resize. Okay. Let me get the corner with good though. I kind of bring the lines up. I want to kind of retrofit it so it fits size-wise in with the other ones that are there. And now I've got a graphical form of it. But what's so awesome about this, it did it for every one. There's eight times four, 32 of these. It created 32 charts when I would have to do one, uh, one at a time normally for that. So I've got it in, in, in chart format. I've got it in report format, California for the master uh, year for, for the detailed section. I could put a blank cell up on top here and I could have put a label, had a title called sales revenue and a title called uh, quantity sold and so on. Those are all little things to spice it up, but we're trying to get a nice layout, a nice view of our data. This is a very popular way. This is probably the number one type of, of situation I've had with customers in training where they come out of it. And this is the kind of stuff that they generate, you know, the master detail, looking at the data hierarchically, navigating with the navigation map to find the stuff. Sometimes they created the, they'll create a single master cell only for one reason, one reason only. They want the search criteria to be available for reporting. And that's one of the easiest ways to do it is let it take advantage of that as well, okay? So lo and behold, now we've got a nice structure laid out for it. So again, for alignment, I touched briefly on that. Going across this way, you can align. Let's do that again. Get this one all laid out nice. Gotta be careful when you do that. I would get one, one single one all aligned. Then I would go back in and apply the, uh, the formatting across with the paint. So they're all consistent that way as well, okay? And lay it all out. So really, really cool. The first part of the building it uh, uh, that you see right here. Uh, we'll expand more in the, in the second section. But what I want to do is I want to, uh, I'm going to stop for a minute here and see if we have any questions before I do any more. Anybody? I don't any? see, I don't see any questions at this time, Michael. Oh, cool. um, so um, that's uh so keep going, just keep okay. going. <laughs> That's what I'll do. That's what I'll do. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go down and I'm going to duplicate the, no, I'm going to actually add a report. And I'm going to sh shrink it down a little bit to make it a little easier to see some of the more enhanced features we're going to do later. So we're going to bring in state and year. Nope. I'm going to leave quarter out of the mix this time. You'll see why later. It could be expanded, but it's going to make it a little bit easier. Well, it doesn't work that way. When I run into these problems, when, I, when I, I'm trying to get them all connected up, 
It's not worth screwing around with. I'm just going to delete that out of there. The old multi-select is awesome. Let's grab year, use our control key and grab state, and then grab sales revenue and grab quantity sold. We'll drag it across. We'll drop it into place. And, and then here we go. So now we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to only have one master cell. It makes it easier for some of the other features that I'm setting you up for for the next part. So again, we want to pull state out. I don't want to do the right click on this and do it this way, set a section. Uh, if this wasn't in here, let's say if I took it out, you notice, and this came up last time, in fact, Paul brought made an issue, which was smart. Notice I went up and over. I've noticed with the browsers, I'm very familiar with this. When I'm working with my blocks, sometimes I can drag it straight over. Sometimes they have to go up and over. When does it matter? Well, with IE, you can go back and forth all you want. With Chrome, typically you have to go up and over or over and down, or if you're moving what column around, up, over, and down. Just a minor behavioral thing relative to the browser side of it. Just be aware of that uh, as you move things around as well, as, as well. So I've got year, sales revenue quantity sold, we'll put state. So now if I want to do state the other way is I could have gone up to report elements here. We could click the section button, which we're on right now. When you click the section, you get that piece of gum stuck to your shoe syndrome. It says, where do you want to drop this master cell? Uh, let's drop it right about there. And it says, what do you want that master cell to be? Uh, we'll make it state, put it in there. There's an alternative way of doing it. And that one, you have a little more control over it as well. I would have lined up my titles and subtitles and laid out the stuff on top first so I know where to start this. But if you're very delicate moving and very patient with, with both ends of it, it allows you to, to move it down, up and down and around as well. Okay, It allows us to get to the point and we'll take the, re the report here now. Let's move it up put over in this area. And now we've got a different type of master detail, but just one master cell only. Makes it a little bit easier when we get into some other advanced topics that we'll be doing after we take the break here in a couple minutes, but let me get it all geared and primed and ready. So the detail report, anything you can do, cross tables, doesn't matter. You can have reports and charts. You can have uh, uh, element linking in between them or in the pie chart, I can click on something and watch that change. A lot of really interesting things you can do as well. So let's take the state. We're going to get it set up for the next to expand on that very soon. And we'll do our classic bordering. It really makes sense to border it for readability. It makes it easier to see where the master cell breaks take place. And what do we do for totals? Well, we originally did it in the block by highlighting the column from my analysis tab and doing the sum. And we did it for quantity sold. Again, it didn't do it automatically. And the reason is I'm not doing a break. Okay, so it, that's the reason for that. If I had pulled these up here, it would have, would have taken it out of the report. So let's get this set up for the next step here when we start expanding on it in the next part of the presentation after. We'll get it kind of laid out nice. And we'll put our good old quantity sold next to it right there. Drag that into place. So we've got it set to go. A little drag and drop it on that one. We'll get it all into place, move it over a little bit that way. And there's our nice master detail report. As I scan down through it, my eight sections stand out well. If it was 50 of them, all 50 would stand out very well. And away we go. It's important for the users to realize, and I made a point of it earlier, think about from a maintenance perspective as well. Whatever I change in, this, in the section level of any one of the masters, it does it for all of them. Whatever I change one of the master cell areas, it affects all of them as well. That's kind of a nice little bonus to have. Pretty cool as well. And then, of course, the navigation map takes us through for part of that as well. Okay. So let's go back and let's just throw in, for example, sake, a quick copy and we'll do a quick paste. Another way you could have done that, the longer way, the more frustrating way is, or actually the quicker way is multi-select and drag them in that way would work just well or one at a time. We wanted to make that look like a chart. We'll put it in there for now. Later on, we're gonna eliminate it, but let's turn it back in. And now we turn that one into our pie chart. And lo and behold, we just gotta size it on in and away you go awesome way to display your data. The detail report can be much more involved. You could have 10, 15, 20 columns, a lot of breaks and sorting going on within each master cell, but here you go. Uh, we're lining up for the break here in a minute, but one of the things I'm gonna be getting into is uh, up here is formatting what's called the section. This is the section, it's the master section of the detail. Um, right now I'm click, I've clicked to the right of the California, kind of the line coming across. There's a blue line above it. If, with, a, with the correct right click of your mouse, You'll see format section, format section, like it was format table, allows us to do all kinds of interesting things at that level. Here's the general one uh, with, you know, hide stuff we'll get into later. From an appearance perspective, some of the different options, maybe the 
Maybe you want to put a, a background color, whatever uh, layout as well. We'll get back to those later, but there's a format section. And if I went back to the first one we had done here, let's go back to report tab number one. I, have a, I also have a format section for year. So I need to be conscious of that, that if I do format section, whether it's, where it's a multiple level master, that I take that into consideration as well. I wouldn't want to do a page break at the year level, but I wouldn't want to do a page break at the state level. And if you notice on layout, when you have multiple master cells, this is very important from a layout perspective. You can start each one on a new page. But if I do it here, oops, I didn't think that through. It's doing it at the, at the, at the year level. So each, it's going to break each year separate from the state. I really want that up, up one level. So we get a nice bonus, but we got to be a little bit careful here. So maybe in this case, again, the format section makes more sense to do the page break here. And we'll do a start on a new page. We'll do an OK and that to close it out. And now I get a page break, California. There we go. And then I get the page numbers for page two and three and four and all the way back to the beginning and in here as well. So by having multiple sections, I get the navigation map, but then I also get the ability to have some fun with the page breaks and so on. Usually for this report, I also like to go to page setup and I like to make it uh, landscape style, make it a little wider because of stuff that you could be going, adding to it as you go left to right, all right? So I think hey, we're right Mike. out line for our- Yeah, yes. hey, Michael, a, a question did come in about how, how do you add a pie chart for quantity sold? Oh, I had all, all, all of them, so it just picked the one for me. All I got to do for this one is I could right click, I could go to assign data, there's your ticket out. Sign data works for charting and others and where it said sales revenue. No, I changed my mind. It shows that because it had more than one. Oh, that's not the one I wanted. Since I had more than one measure, it just picked one arbitrarily. Um, uh, when, when I've got, oh yeah, quantity sold changed up there. Now it's quantity sold for that one as well. Remember right. assigned data, even inside master detail blocks, good old assigned data is your ticket out to remapping things. It also sh shows you uh, hidden any hidden columns you might have as well. All these little intricate little details that are there to learning to what to look for for those. By the way, I'm gonna do a little save on this one so I have it after the break in case I time out, which I don't have to regenerate all that stuff. So, so I tried to keep oh, us was, on target for our break. Are we doing good? We are. That was absolutely awesome. Thank you so much, Michael. Um, that's great. I will hand back over to, I don't see any other questions right now. Okay. We'll continue on with it after the break for part two and add right. some additional fun stuff in there. Okay, over to you, Lucy.